chapter 16 and verse 25. The Bible said, Now unto him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, Paul says, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Let me read that again in case I read it too fast. Now unto him that is of the power to establish you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Father, I ask you to bless your word, bless your servant. God, I pray for an unction of the Holy Ghost. I pray, Father, there is any here that don't know you, the free pardon of sin that's never passed from death unto life. God, this would be the hour of their salvation. Lord, if there's any here that be religious and not saved, I pray, I pray for their soul. God, I ask you, Lord, to, to have three course, move breast to breast. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I want to preach to you on the mysteries of the Bible. And I will know why to be able to get into the full depths of the mysteries of the Bible. But there's some that, that's very needful for you to know about. There's some that uh, will be very helpful for you to be able to understand. The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 16 that without and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. He said, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, and believed on in the world, received up into glory. That's what happened. He's talking about the, the incarnation. It's a great mystery of godliness. The mystery of godliness is that God in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ was impregnated into the belly of Mary. Amen. And uh, she uh, conceived and bare the son uh, uh, under her and Joseph that was the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in John's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 1, he said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Verse 12 of Gospel of John, he tells us this, but as many as received him, Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The first birth that you have experienced is a physical birth. It's a, it's a fleshly birth. You have, you have world conscious through that. You, uh, you interact with the things around you. But the second birth, friend Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see Amen. the kingdom yeah. of God. Amen. He says in verse number 14, he said, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. What word? Verse 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Verse 14, and the word was made flesh. What word? The Word of God. In 1 John chapter 5, I think it is, he said, there are three that bear record in heaven. He said uh, that it is the Word. He said it is the, the Spirit. And it is the, uh, the Father. Amen. Let me turn there and read that. I probably quoted that wrong. Amen. He said, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I said it right, but just not exactly right. And uh, these three are one. Yeah. You say, explain that. Well, you're sitting there in front of me right now. You are a body. You have a body. As a matter of fact, you're inside the body looking out at me. You can do like this and say, I hate that preacher, and I wish he'd shut up. And I wouldn't know the difference because all I can see is the body. 
Amen. But you are a spirit, and you have a soul, yeah. and you are a soul and spirit, and you live inside of a body. You are a triune being that's been made in the image of Adam who was made in the image of God. Amen. And the fact of it is that without the Lord Jesus Christ, you're separated from God. Amen. And you can't know him except through the blood atonement that he has made for you and I. You say, how many gods are there is one God? How many people are you? You're one person. But you're a soul. And you have and you're a spirit. And you're a body. Talked to a man that used to come here and he got hit by a train and lived to tell about it. Cut his arm off completely up to the stump. And we were sitting here and he said, Man, my arm's itching me. I said, Well, you want me to scratch it for you? Because he has one arm. You can't really scratch your arm. He said, that ain't the arm that's itchy. <laughs> and I said, well, buddy, that's the only one you got. He said, well, you wouldn't know it. He said, that thing's itching like crazy. <laughs> and I said, well, oh. you say, well, what is that? Well, the Bible said there was a, a certain rich man who died. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. In hell, he had a tongue. In hell, he had eyes. He had memory. He had... Uh, he saw Lazarus that was on the other side of hell and he saw him in paradise and he said, have him to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormenting these flames. But while this was going on, they were having a funeral over his body. Well, whose eyes were those? There it is. It's in the selfish body. Amen. I talked to a guy, I had his leg over at the VA hospital when I was there, and he said, man, my leg's itching. I said, which one? He said, are you being smart? And I said, no. He said, you know somebody that's had a limb removed, don't you? And I said, I do. He said, it's the one you thought. Amen. You say, oh, that's just nerves. I know, it's just nerves, and, and, and there is no reality, and you're just a bug, and you come from a little... That is the moment. It takes more faith to believe that than to receive the gospel. Amen. Listen, the mystery of the incarnation is this, that God sent his son unto you and I that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter number 2, the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse number 12, he said this, he said, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not only in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, Paul didn't say to the church of Philippi to work for your salvation. He said, work it out. Yeah. He didn't say, he didn't say keep yourself. He said, work out your salvation. He said, work it out. Get it fitted into your life. Be able to, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and to make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. He said, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1 and verse 3, who is, he said, who is who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he hath by himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's God manifested in the flesh. He's also the God man. He was man. He was God. He set aside his royalty and come and took on the form of a servant for you and I, that we can have life and have it more abundantly. He fulfilled the law to the very jot and the very little. Not one sin could they accuse him of. Not one sin could they pin on him. Not one transgression had he ever made. He was guilty of love in the first degree, the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's the great mystery of godliness. Jesus said in John 4 and 24, he said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Just as God was not visible in the tabernacle in the wilderness, so God, amen, no, I mean, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't there to where they could see, uh, see his presence because he told them, he said, no man shall see my face and live. 
it would consume them. And God has veiled himself in the form of flesh through the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ was veiled when he tabernacled among us in his human flesh. But he was justified in the spirit. He didn't say he saw spirits. He said he was justified in the spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ was not only sinless, but he was justified. The Bible said here in our text in 1 Timothy 3 and 16, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit. I mean, he was justified. Everything he did, the Holy Ghost said, Amen to. Every miracle he did, the Holy Ghost said, Check. Every act of mercy he showed, he said, Check. Amen. He was justified in everything that he done. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter number 4, in Romans chapter 4, verse, verse 24 and 25, he said, For unto us also... To whom it shall be imputed, this was written. He said, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. The Lord Jesus Christ, he, he rose from the dead. In doing so, he justified us. To be able to present us who are full of fault before his presence without fault. Isn't that what he said in Jude 24? In the book of Jude, when he was saying this, now to him, let me just read that for you. I, I'm sure it's Jude 24. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless, who before the presence of his glory, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. I'm so glad. Listen, I was telling Sunday school this morning that, that in my condition that I'm in, I've been living for the Lord for a long time, over 30 years. Most of my adult life, I've been living for God. I got saved when I was a, a fairly young man. I've struggled. I've got up. I've got down. I've been strong. I've been weak. And I told him, I said, you'd think that after you've lived for the Lord that many years, you'd start getting this thing to where that you'd start feeling holy. And you'd start feeling like you, like you really got... Man, you're getting clean. 30 years of serving God and presenting yourself. You ought to be, ta-da! <laughs> and that's not the way it is. The closer I get to God, the more vile and wicked I see in myself. I said this last Sunday, I believe, that when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't come to Him on your merit. You come to Him on the merit of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you come before the throne of God, you come before Him in the merit of what? You think you can live <coughs> close enough, holy enough, present yourself in such a way that you can just walk up, chest throat out before God and say, I've been a good boy. You can't come to God like that. That's not the merit you come on. Now, friend, God loves obedience. It's better than sacrifice. God wants you to be an obedient child. I don't say that, so I'll give you a a, a cause for ungodliness, but just remember that you are what you are by the grace of God. And it's but by His mercy He receives you. So when you see Him receive somebody you think to be more sinner than you, know it's under the same conditions that they're received as you're received. Amen. Boy, that kills some people. I mean, that just don't sit good with them. Sort of like the fellers when the Lord went down into the town and a man went down through there and he hired, he hired this man to come work for him and then two or three hours later he went back and saw some more standing around he got down and then two or three more hours he went by and he hired some more and then at the last hour he hired one guy to come and work for an hour. And then when he started to pay him, he gave the guy that worked for an hour the same thing, full base pay. And the next one he gave a full day's pay, and they got ticked off because they worked more hours than he did. Some people come to God, and you, you say, Lord, I've been living for you and doing this, and they hardly ever live for you. Maybe they're coming in pure faith, yeah. trusting in the finished work of Calvary. And maybe you're coming because what you've done. Look what I have in my... Yeah. The cane symptom. 
I've given you the best my hands can do. Friend, through the work of the flesh shall no man be justified. It's only through the Spirit. That's it. It's when God is allowed to work through you both to will and to do His good pleasure. In Romans chapter number 8, verse 11, he tells us this. Romans 8 and 11, he said, But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brother, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons Amen. of God. God has given us the Holy Spirit. Amen. I got the Spirit when I got born again. If you've been saved, you got the Holy Ghost when you got born again. You say, well, preacher, what about being filled with the Spirit? That's your daily duty. That's your daily duty to come before the Lord. And he said, be not drunk with wine. In Galatians, he said, or Ephesians, he said, be not drunk with wine, but be ye filled with the Spirit. It's not a choice, but a command to present yourself unto the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in verse number 44, he tells us this. He's talking about the body. He said, it is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. You see, there's not only the mystery of the incarnation, but there's the mystery of the divine dwelling of the Holy Ghost of God inside you. In Ephesians 1 and 20, he tells us this. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 20, he says this. He said, he said, which he had wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him down at his own right hand in heavenly places far above principality and power and might and dominion that every name that is named, not only in this world but also in the world which is to come, that he had put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him. He said in verse 1 of chapter 2, If you had the quicken who were dead in trespasses and sin, for in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. But God has given us of his spirit. We've been made bone of his bone and, and flesh of his flesh. You see, there is a divine mystery of the Bible of the incarnation. And there is a divine mystery of being, being filled with the Holy Ghost of God. He tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He said, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new, and all things are of God. Listen, you became a new creature when you got born again. Being saved didn't just quit some stuff. Being saved didn't just start to go to church. I know a lot of people that go to church. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian anymore. Going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. Amen. Amen. You can eat at both places. But you must be born to be. Amen. God asked the preacher, he said, why do you keep preaching that over and over? He said, because you must. If you're going to make heaven your home, you must be born to be. It's not a, it's not a choice. It's a, it's, I mean, it's the only way. Jesus said in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Listen, there's the mysteries of the Bible. There is the mystery of godliness. There is the, there is the, the mystery of the divine indwelling, which is Christ in you. Colossians 1 and 27. The book of Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27, he said this, To whom God would make known what the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now it's Christ in you. How's your relation? Is it, a, is it a churchual relation? Is it something you've got with a group of people or something you have with the Savior? Is it, is it some kind of Commitment you've made to an organization 
Or is it something you've got between you and the living Lord? Because that's the one that counts. I know a lot of people that sit down on God. I know many people who I thought was of us, but they wasn't. Or had they been of us, they'd continue with us. Amen. 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 Religion will take you a long ways, but salvation will take you to heaven. In Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 9, this is what God said about it. He said, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. And if he doesn't dwell in you, then you're none of his. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 7, I think it's 21, he said, Many shall come unto me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, in thy name have we not done many wonderful works? In thy name have we not cast out devils? And in thy name, and he said, he's going to look at them and say, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. It wasn't that I used to know you and you messed up and I don't know you anymore. That's not what he said. He said, I never knew you. I know some people that thinks if you get a haircut, put a suit on, quit cussing and drinking, well, you got religion. But that's not salvation. Amen. Salvation is in a person. It's in the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ in you is the hope of glory. He says in the same chapter of Romans 8, verses 1 and 2, He says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. If you walk after the flesh, you're going to have condemnation. How many's ever sinned since you've been saved? We've got some honest people here. A few of you said, I ain't raising my hand for nobody. Amen. <laughs> Every one of us had. Amen. How many of you had the, the devil come to you and say, God don't love you no more than what you need. You might as well just give up. Yeah. Yeah. You think God loves you, looks at you? You're a hypocrite. Boy, that's a hard one. Every one of us have had hypocrisy in our life. And we've had sin in our life. I talked to a guy and he said, you know, if I know my heart, and I said, there's the key, you don't know it. He said, I do know it. And I said, I'll tell you what, tell me about your heart. He said, well, i got a good heart. I said, you think you're smarter than God? <laughs> he said, well, no, nobody is. I said, well, God said your heart was desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Amen. Let me tell you about your heart. Your heart can learn some things. Your heart can know not to call sin, sin, but it knows what it's wanting, and it'll try to manipulate you to get you over here where it can get what it wants. Yeah. Heart's desperately wicked. You can't trust your heart. You can trust the Holy Ghost. He'll never lead you. Wrong. He'll never lead you outside this book. Amen. Amen. There's some mysteries in the Bible. I mean, friend, I, th I some people who, who I know that carries the Bible are mysteries to me. Amen. Amen. Galatians chapter 2. The book of Galatians chapter 2, Paul said this. He said, in verse number 20, Galatians 2 20, he said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Paul had Christ in him, the hope of glory. Amen. He said, Christ liveth in me. He said, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself in me. It's the mystery of Christ in you told this this morning in Sunday school. I said, when I sure enough got saved, I went to the altar many times and didn't get it. I really did. I went and cried and cried and got up. Ain't no change in me. I went back to the same job, blasphemed the same, did everything the same. There was no change in me. My heart didn't change toward God. Didn't, didn't take <coughs> People had asked me, they said, you got saved? I said, didn't stick. <laughs> You can't. You might act like a Christian. You might. A lot of people are good, good pretenders. You know, they can act the part. But friend, down deep in my soul, I know who I have believed in. They changed me. By saying that, I am in no wise saying I'm 
sinlessly perfected because buddy, I'm not. But I'll tell you what I am, I'm sure enough a child of God. Amen. God has dealt with me as with a son. And he does deal with me as with a son. And he guides me. I've had I've had some, I've been in some churches, they had blow-ups, people got mad. I just got out of there and left, man. God's people shouldn't act that way. Amen. Amen. Family shouldn't act that way. How many of you ever had a blow up in your family? <laughs> Some of you come from one last time. The thing I'm saying is it happens. Maybe more than some. <laughs> the thing I'm saying is that kind of thing happens, but you're still family. I remember in the 70s, maybe late 70s, early 80s, they had a song they come out with. I think that was around the, the period. Little girls. Sound like little girls singing. He's still working on me. Make me what I ought to be. And friend, you'll find that you're true to say God's still working yeah, on you. He'll show you things. He'll show you the mysteries of things. In such ways that it will blow your mind. The Bible said that, that he was justified in the spirit. He was seen of angels. He didn't say he seen angels. He was seen of angels. Listen. Blow their mind. What God did. To take on him. He made himself a little lower than the angels. Humbled himself into obedience of the Father. Even into the cross. I couldn't give my son to you. I don't really truly know that if I could give my life for everybody. I don't know that I could. I don't know. I know I've heard people say, I'd die for this. And then you find them running off at first two. Believe the good person. I'm quitting going home. I ain't going to go for life. <laughs> You're going to really stick her out there, aren't you? <laughs> Then there's the mystery of the resurrection. It's going to happen. The Lord said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And there's, there's, all, there's the mystery of the mystery. And I'm not about to go into that because we'll be here all day. The sins are abounds. And if you're saved this morning, if your name's been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. If you want the Scriptures, after that, I can give them to you. Uh, after the service, I'll be glad to give them all to you. I've probably got 30 of them. be glad to share them with you about what happens to a person after they believe and receive the gospel of their salvation, how they're sealed with that Holy Spirit. He says in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, being bad, we've all been, uh, wherefore as by one Spirit we are all baptized in the one body. He's talking not about water, but by the Holy Ghost. By the Spirit of Almighty God. Ephesians 4 30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, for I go sealed until the day of redemption. I mean, there's many, many scriptures that tell us that God has sealed you. But there is going to be a resurrection. I don't know if you understand how earnest works, but earnest works this way. If you go to buy something, you get in a contractual agreement with somebody or a covenant agreement and you give earnest. And your earnest could be money, it could be gold, it could be something of monetary value, but you give the earnest and you say, I'm going to come back and finish the deal completely. God, when he saved you, gave you the earnest of the Spirit. And let me tell you how earnest works. If you don't come back, if you don't come back and finish the deal that you said that you was going to do, they keep the earnest. And God willing to show that he was going to complete the, the complete thing that God didn't just save you to leave you here. You're going to get to have a glorified body. One like unto the Son of God. He gave you the earnest of the Spirit until the purchase package be complete. He said, if you have not the Spirit of God, you're none of His. What will the Spirit of God do? 
to guide you into all truth. What will the Spirit of God do? He'll warn you. What will the Spirit of God do? He'll fill you. What will the Spirit of God do? He'll convict you. What will He do? He'll reprove you. What will He do? He'll correct you. He will guide you in the path of righteousness. For His name's sake. Be happy, Spirit. Some people, when they get away from their wife, or when they get away from their husband, or when they get away from their church people, they change. And I don't mean just here or there. I mean, all, I mean, it's who they really are. Who do you feel more comfortable with, saints or sinners? Who can you be yourself with? That's who you are. That's who you are. Can you be yourself among the brethren in the Lord? Or can you be yourself when you're around rapists and murderers and drunks and druggies and blasphemers and the base of your sword? But for most people, it would be just that part-timers, you know, those that just drink on the weekend and keep jobs and stay respectable. The same spirit works at all. I've got two scriptures and I'll close. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 51, Paul said, Behold, I show you a mystery. This is the mystery of the resurrection. He said, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that death is swallowed up in victory. He said, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? He said, The strength of death, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the grave. But thanks be to God which has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. There is a mystery. 1 Corinthians 15, the same chapter, verse number 12, he says this. He said, Now if Christ be preached, that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, we and we are found false witnesses of God, because we testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, and you reject your sins. There is no virgin birth, bodily resurrection, and ascension up into glory. You might as well close the doors and leave. Have you believed the gospel? There is a preaching going on right now that says all you got to do is just believe. Believe what? Just believe in Jesus. What do you got to believe about him? No nothing in the picture. You just got to believe in him. Yeah. It's called the free grace prayer. And it, it's amazing because they use some of the same terminology. They, they use catchphrases that sounds Christian. You got to watch it. There is no spirit. I mean, I know people that. Up here, mentally, they've got it down pat and nailed, buddy. They know all the right scriptures. They know all the right answers. They know how the preachers talk. They know the cliches. They know the, they, they, they can talk the talk, but there is no power in their life. And there is no life spiritually in their life. God tells us this. He said, Then 
also they which are fallen asleep in Christ or perish. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by a man came death, by a man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall deliver up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign until he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy shall be destroyed this death. For he hath put all things under his feet. When he said, all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subjected unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subjected unto him, and put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else what shall they do which were baptized of the dead? He said, if the dead rise not at all. And why are they being baptized for the dead? He said, And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die thee. Paul said this, he said, After, after the manner of men, I fought the beast of Ephesus. What advantage is me if the dead rise not? Let us eat drink, for tomorrow we die. He said, Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. You've got to watch who you hang around with. You've got to watch who you converse with. Because it matters. You say, it won't bother me, preacher. I'm spiritually mature. Is that right? God said evil communication corrupts good man. He didn't say just to the weak it's like that. He said, awake to righteousness and sin not. Some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. And some men will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, that it may chance of wheat or some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it has pleased him to ever see his own body. Friend, just as sure as, as you're saved, the Bible said this, he said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet, 